extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile, tells the story of true killer Ted Bunny. And we see the story being played out from his point of view of his former girlfriend, Elizabeth Kendall. This is based on her memoir, The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy. And the plot of this movie is that in 1969, we follow a law student named Ted Bundy, and he meets Liz Kendall. And she's a secretary and single mother. And the two begin dating, and Ted helps Liz raise their young daughter. Then in 1974, there starts to become murders of multiple young women, including two who disappeared in broad daylight at Lake Samanish. So a man resembling Ted was seen by several people asking women to help him load the sailboat. And then we find out that Ted is the one who's killing all of these people. And so they then we have a trial you know, and remarks on Ted Burnley and his murders. And so basically we she refused to believe the truth about him for years. Extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. It's pretty underrated. I don't really understand the hatred that this movie has gotten. Yes, it's not... It's not... Perfect. There's definitely a, a lot of flaws, especially when you come to the process of... It does feel like it's more in the past but you do see the potential that they're going I do like the idea of Liz being a college student and she's trying to profess his innocence through his trials but also all the other people they try to put this guy away and they tried to get enough justice on him to make sure he didn't he he did kill him because the guy in real life he's he killed he confessed to over 30 murders days before he get the, the his execution and it doesn't hold back From what this movie is trying to do. Easily the acting is very strong here. Zac Efron's Ted Bundy. He's, Zac Efron's come a long way since High School Musical and seeing him take on a role like this was very very interesting and I think it was a pretty good way for him to do. To go. Also, you got Lily Collins in here and Kaya Scodelario, which they are both really great in the movie as well. The, John Malkovich, always great. It's great to see a awesome actor, child actor return like Haley Joe Osment, Dylan Baker, aka Dr. Connors from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, Jim Parsons. The acting is really great all the way around. The problem that it does have is that the narrative is a little is a little mixed because most of the film's narrative is is trying to tell the story, but most of it does feel like it's either inaccurate or just not very well handled in most aspects. That doesn't make the movie a bad film, it's just you could have done that a little bit better and in terms of the writing it could have been a lot better handled. 
this movie might have a possible return in the fall for award season and the vis visibility. So I could see Zac Efron getting some kind of award for this because he plays the heck out of this part. Especially when we get to the killings and the violence. And it doesn't stray away from what it's trying to do. And this has some great music and some great cinematography. It's just that the script and the editing and the narrative could have been a little bit better. But overall, I did enjoy Extremely Wicked, sh Shockingly Evil and Vile for the most part. And it's definitely one of the better movies of the year. And in my opinion, I find this to be underrated. So, I'm going to give Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil evil and vile a slight highly recommended I didn't hate it could have been better but you could have done a lot worse so let me know what you guys think about this movie down below do you like it do you not like it be sure to follow my social media links down below in the description box be sure to check out my official website be sure, be, be sure to become a subscriber for so whatever you get notifications with new videos as well as community posts on my community tab basically all that stuff you guys keep it cool and join the epitaphness bye bye